Seven and a half point underdogs. Sure didn't look like that on Wednesday night for Boston College basketball. You are Locked On Boston College, your daily podcast on the Boston College Eagles. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome, everyone. This is Locked On Boston College. I am your host, AJ Black. I'm the editor and publisher of Eagle Insider, part of the 247 Network. Good morning. Today's episode is brought to you by Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Take the Nissan Rogue, Pathfinder, or Armada and go on your next big adventure. Check them out all today at NissanUSA.com. Folks. We're watching some fun basketball now. Things are cooking over down in uh, Charlotte as BC is past round two. They passed their second test, dropping and dominating Clemson 76-55 in the second round. What a game for BC. Now, this was a late game on Wednesday night, a 9.30 start. And everything went BC's way after the the first 10 minutes. And what this game showcased, what we saw in this win was a total team win. And it was different than the first win that you had uh, against uh, um, Miami in the first round. Because in this game, it wasn't the Quinton Post show. Now, in against Miami, it was Quinton Post looked like he was a man on fire. Like he was just playing his his butt off against the Hurricanes, he got in foul trouble very early. And if you remember what I said on yesterday's podcast, the only way BC was going to, well, what I thought, the only way BC was going to win this game was if Quinton Post had a big game and stayed out of foul trouble. Because the last time Clemson played BC, that was the food poison game. Quinton Post, Prince of Ligby, and Armani Mighty missed the game with food poisoning. And PJ Hall had, I think it was 27 points in that game. Well, Quinton Post only had 10 points in this win. So how did they win this? How did you go ahead and win without your your uh, Dutch superstar leading the way? Well, it's the man on the screen right now if you're watching on YouTube, Claudel Harris Jr. The guy that for many big chunks of this end of this year was struggling more. He had some of the biggest struggles I've seen of any player on this team. This was his redemption game, and it came at a beautiful spot. 27 points for Harris as the Eagles win by 21. Now, remember, last time BC played Clemson, they allowed 89 points. They were they and they only lost, I think, in that game by 11, but it was it it was over fast. And then because BC was so outgunned. You saw Joe Girard score 27 points in that last game. Joe Girard has been a Boston College killer. He has dominated BC when he played for Syracuse. He dominated against BC again uh, this year. You know, they, they, they have been, uh, he has been the thorn in Boston College's side over the last 15 years or so that he's played for, for uh, in the ACC. In this game, he was held to 13 points. And how ironic was it, how interesting is it, that BC is a team that sent him home. Now, he's going to get to play in the ACC tournament, so it's not like this is over. But I love it. I love that this is this is the, the, t- the game that BC wins. B- Earl Grant's got something going. This is the second year in, out of three that he's won uh, more than one game in the ACC tournament. And what we saw on Tuesday night was another team that looked the part. So let's go over what happened. Things started off pretty slow for BC. You know, they both teams were very clunky offensively. Uh, they were, cha- you know, tra- uh, you know, um, exchanging back and forth bad possessions. It was not, it wasn't going very well. But then Quinton Post started getting things going, uh, and he he hit the first couple opening shots to give them the lead. You know, he was aggressive. He's always aggressive, uh, and but. That as BC started to build a small lead, it was you, the thing that happened that you didn't want to happen happen. Quinton Post picked up his second foul, and Earl Grant benched him. 
And so I think everyone in Boston College Nation, you're starting to hold your breath going, oh, gosh, what's going to happen now? Because when you have that star on the bench, BC's been playing with such a short bench, especially against Miami. They played, they're playing short benches because they're going to go with the guys that have gotten them there. They don't need to just cycle through guys. They're going to try to keep winning. Without post out there, you know that the team is not the same. But credit to Earl Grant, credit to this roster for playing as well as we've seen them all again all year. It was Claudel Harris who continued to hit big shots. So, so with post on the bench, BC's offense clicked. And the big piece here is Clemson had basically the same thing happen. P.J. Hall got into foul trouble. And it, unlike BC, their offense became unglued. They couldn't find a shot. And BC went on a huge run and went up by, I think it was 40 to 28 at half. They were gonna they were up by 15 until Joe Girard, you know, who hit, hits a, a corner three and you're all going, oh God, is he going to do it again? Is he going to like, you know, uh, start willing their way back into this game? But that's not what happened. That's the second half starts. Quinton Post is, is put back out there. And I don't want to, I don't want to poo poo what Post did. Because he only got 10 points, but he almost had a triple-double with just 11 points. He had eight eight rebounds and seven assists. Again, a quieter game offensively, but he did a ton on the floor. And you could feel his presence in that second half. In the second half, it was it was a little bit of back and forth. But then Hall gets his third, his third foul for, for Clemson, and he is put on the bench. Then BC just basically owns the glass and they put the game away. Clemson never got back in this game. They never got the game back in within uh, single digits and BC just ran away with it in the second half. What a win. What a win by this program. A team that just a month ago was left for dead comes out here against a Clemson team that kicked their butts and returned the favor. These guys are playing better basketball than they have all year, and they've done it for two games in a row. Again, I say this, I say this with in in awe that they held a team that scored 89 points against them to 55 points. And I don't believe Clemson was missing anyone. That you know, Gerard and Hall were both playing, and those are the guys that killed you last time. So BC was playing, and I know it was they had their guys back, but now they got their roster together. They've got everybody there. Things are looking good down there. Now up third round, and we're going to talk all about what that could look like in just a moment. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that pushed it further than the rest. Like any of all, any and all of the 2024 Nissan SUVs, these guys were able to take it to the next level. Today's episode is about the Tennessee Vols, who can only be described as the Pathfinders. They've been thrilling to watch and have really created a lane for themselves after claiming the top spot in the SEC. Player of the Year candidate Dalton Knock has carried the Vols all season and made them a team to watch in March. So we want you to take the Nissan Rogue, the Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Make sure you shop Nissan today. This is Locked On Boston College, AJ Black. Isn't it great to be excited about BC basketball again? They're now, I believe, sitting at 19 and 14. And they are one win away from 20 wins. And isn't that the goal that we've had all year? I know it's coming in a little bit later. You were hoping to have 20 wins going into the ACC tournament. But now sits in front of you the Cle- I mean, I'm Cleveland Cavaliers, the UVA, the UVA Cavs. BC gets them after losing to the Cavs just a couple weeks ago. They lost to them um, 72-68. So they've been able to hold their own against this team. UVA also, you could also look at it two ways, right? They have arrested. They haven't played yet. That's good for them. But on the other hand, 
maybe they're going to have a little bit of rust. BC is playing the best basketball that they've played all year. The, I, you know, I know it's the third game in three, three, third game in three days for them, but there's something to also be said to be said that this team is playing with a lot of momentum now, that they're playing with a lot of heart, and so. You know, I'm sure that the the I think the last time they played BC was actually the favorite in that game, but there's a, I, I don't know I'm I'm feeling this, folks. I'm feeling there's a good chance BC could go out there and beat UVA. UVA going into this tournament, um, you know they they're 21 and nine, uh, 22 and nine, excuse me, and they're they've won two out of their last three, but they lost quite a few before that. They lost three out of their last four, so. You, you know, their only wins coming against Georgia Tech and BC. This is a team that could be could be picked off. You know, they're not an offensive team. They haven't been. BC just needs to sh- shut down Reese Beekman, who I think killed them last time. They've got to play their best basketball, but I think they can do it. The way that Quinton Post and Jaden Zachary are playing, uh, you're not going to lose many games. This is a team that looks like they're ready for the NIT. And this is what I'm talking about now. I saw someone ask, I think it was Brett Ryder of Eagles Daily, ask, is this, if this team wins all but the, is it, the only way is this team going to make the tournament winning the ACC tournament? And the, the answer is yes. They're not, BC's not going to make the NCAA tournament unless they win, they win out. However, I think if they win a, get to, today's game, if you're listening on Thursday against Virginia, another 930 start. We sleep in May, as John Rothstein, st- John Rothstein of uh, CBS says. If they can win tonight, they're going to be 20 and 14. Then they play Duke, who killed them. <laughs> we'll, we'll just leave it at that. If they win against UVA, I think their, their season is not going to be over. I think they're going to get a chance to go to the NIT and continue their season. And that begs the question, right now, is this season now a success for Boston College? And with a win over Clemson, I still don't think it is. I think it's like teetering. It's like it's not a disappointment, but it's not a success yet, right? And what kills me about this season is that if BC beat Florida State on that game where they couldn't get the inbound pass in, if they beat UVA where they lost four po- by four points, or they beat Loyola Chicago with that epic, you know, meltdown at the end, if they won any of those games, we would be talking about BC potentially being a, a tournament team. We would be talking about this t- season being a huge success and doing everything that we expected them to do. That's how razor thin a college basketball season can be. And it kills me because it's just those few losses that turned everything on their head because this team is so close to having some good momentum right now. I'm telling you, I saw news that there's a 2025 recruit, Joson, uh, Sanan, jo- Joson Sanan. I'm going to totally botch his name up, uh, from Vermont Academy. This is the number 11 recruit in the entire country. Number 11, according to two, four, seven sports. He is down to six schools, Kansas, Boston College, the um, Gatorade League, or the G League, excuse me, uh, UConn, and Kentucky. And I think there's one more I'm totally blanking on right now. How big would this be? You know, like if BC could beat UVA, they're going to get some momentum going. This kid just eliminated from his, his, his choices Louisville, Providence. Providence, a team that's kicked your butt on the recruiting trail for years. This win, if BC can beat UVA, who knows what could happen? I mean, my my gut tells me there's no chance BC could get this kid. You know, when I I don't think BC's ever got a uh, basketball recruit of this caliber. Like he is a five star recruit, but the way that they're playing and the momentum that they're getting, they're getting themselves to that spot. They're getting themselves to into that conversation where you're going, Hey, why not BC? Why not? Why couldn't BC, you know, figure out a way to get this kid on campus. So there, there's that piece too. I think the NIT is locked up with a a win against UVA. And I said earlier in this episode, I think BC can beat UVA. I do. 
I think this team is playing better than any team right now that's not UNC or Duke in the in the ACC. Um, Duke and UNC are a totally different animal. And if BC beats UVA, I believe they get Duke or Duke and whoever. I think they play NC State. They're going to play Duke. <laughs> I don't know. I don't. Th- I don't know if BC has the guns to do that. But it's been exciting, and this feels again like the 2022 postseason run where they beat Wake and they beat. And, you know, they were right at the edge against Miami. A win against UVA would make this run even better than that run because remember that Miami run, that Miami game, they were like teetering right on the edge, and then they lost in overtime. Um, on a terrible, I think it was a terrible play. I forget exactly what happened, but this is a chance now for them to take that next step. You're going to be, you're playing a ranked team. This could get you another big ranked win. You haven't had that this year. You beat Clemson, who's one of the, they're going to be a tournament team, but now you have a chance to beat a ranked team. I think they can do it. What do you think folks? We'll talk all about that on tomorrow's show. Now we're going to step away from basketball now for a moment, because I want to talk about a question that was asked for Bill O'Brien on Monday at Monday's press conference. And I want to get my thoughts out there about Thomas Castellanos and how he could fit in Bill O'Brien's system. And is it something to be worried about? We'll get into all of that in just a moment. Fire TV is your destination for sports, from live games to highlights to in-depth analysis. Fire TV offers amazing viewing experiences with smart TVs as well as the Fire Stick that you can plug into your existing TV. That provides access to millions of movies and TV episodes as well as free and live TV. Whether it's opening weekend for baseball or the college basketball tournament, you're going to want to have a Fire TV. Fire TV recently created Fire TV channels to deliver a constant supply of the latest videos from your favorite sports brands all for free. That includes all of us at the Locked On and most of the big pro game leagues in conference conferences as well. Fire TV lets you dive into all the game analysis, highlights, and more to keep you up to date on all the latest in the world of sports, March Madness, NBA, MLB, and lots more. Not to mention great news, entertainment, gaming, travel, cooking videos as well. Check out Fire TVs on Fire TV and Alexa devices. If you haven't checked out Fire TV channels, you should. Trust me on this. To learn more, visit www.amazon.com slash locked on fire. TV. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors is everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers to roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're in speed, power, style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Motors guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. This is Locked On Boston Call J.J. Black. On Wednesday, Boston College held their second press conference and second practice, excuse me, more importantly, under the Fish Fieldhouse. And you got a chance to hear from Will Long, Drew Kendall, and Dino Tomlin. I'll have some of their clips up on the site, and we'll do a little quotables to get all that info up on Eagle Insider. But on Monday, a, a, a conversation was started with Bill O'Brien during the press conference that I thought was really interesting, which was asked about how Thomas Castellanos can – succeed in his offense i've seen um also on 247 uh, one of the national writers had a a, a article up asking about one of the biggest question marks for each team going into spring practice and the biggest question mark according to i think it was grant hughes that wrote it was how bill o'brien would utilize a guy like thomas castellanos now why is this an issue and why is this something we're talking about well it's because be, uh, Bill O'Brien really has never had a quarterback like Thomas Castellanos, a guy who's run for 1,200 yards. He's had mobile quarterbacks before, Deshaun Watson, um, Bryce Young. They've both been very mobile. But remember, Castellanos ran for over 1,100 yards last year and over, I think he had over 100-plus runs. 
So he's a guy that can run the ball and a guy that you could build offenses around his legs. The question remains is how much will Bill O'Brien use that in his offense? Now, this is a, this is a cool thing, I think, about having Bill O'Brien. Because if you were to put in, you know, some offensive coordinators that this hasn't been their jam, that they're more for pro style, I would worry about how they would utilize Castellanos or how they would be able to adapt. But Bill O'Brien is one of the best offensive coordinators in the country uh, for a reason. The reason he was in the pros, reason he's in college. This guy knows his stuff. So to me, when I hear this worry, I don't think it's as big of a deal as people are making it out to be. He's going to adapt this offense to make sure Thomas Castellanos can run. He's not a dumb guy. We know that Thomas Castellanos, his biggest you know, weapon is his legs right now. You don't just take that away from him. That's, that's, that's coaching malpractice. But you can also adapt some of the things that Castellanos does so that he's not running all the time. Because as much as we all loved watching him run for 12, 1,100 yards, there were games where that was literally all they had for offense. It was him running because he couldn't throw the ball. He couldn't, he was, I, I it looked dinged up. So he, his, his throwing wasn't great. And at times you didn't have Kai Roba show. So you couldn't really um, run the ball with someone else either. Now they have the depth at running back. So that should be, that should be covered as I, um, I don't think I, I don't know if I said it on an earlier episode, they've got a couple new running backs. Trayshawn Ward looks great. Jordan McDonald, this kid from UCF is built like a moose. Uh, he's bigger than he's bigger than Robichaux. <laughs> he is huge. So they've got a couple big running backs to keep their power running going. But I think there's the piece that I think you're going to see more of is you're going to see Bill O'Brien adapting some of the bad habits that Castellanos has and teaching him some of the ways to be a good quarterback. Now, O'Brien said at his press conference, you know, it, helping Castellanos be quicker with getting rid of the ball is going to be crucial. I don't expect him to be a guy, a quarterback that's going to be like Tom Brady, where he's just going to flick the ball out, you know, and, you know, you know, you always have like uh, Tony Romo with that clock on, look, he gets the ball out in two seconds or whatever it was. No, I don't think that's going to happen. But I think what O'Brien would like to see is less of, you know, him running around circles for, you know, extending the plays for 20 seconds with his legs if he doesn't have to. So adding that into his repertoire would be great because you're going to have plays that are going to have Castellan break down that Castellan is going to do that. You need to. That's not a bad thing to have, but you also want to have plays where he can quickly and effective, effectively get rid of the ball and not risk it getting intercepted like it did a couple times, many times last year. So I think that is more what's going on here. I think Thomas Castellanos is going to be a big, uh, he's going to be, he's going to be good in the system. Um, you know, I, I, I was talking to somebody in, in the media who was saying they were wondering if, you know, Bill O'Brien might go in a different direction at some point. It was just, he was just curious. I don't think, I don't think so. Thomas Castellanos, if you were to, there's no one else on this roster that can do what he can do. Uh, Jacoby Robinson is is nice, but he needs another year. Grayson James, I guess, but is he? You you would be taking a, a noticeable step down from what Castellanos can do. No offense to Grayson James, I'm sure he's fine. You have your quarterback right here, and you have to play with him. You need to figure it out. And I think there's two things that will happen, as I just said. You're going to fix a little bit with Castellanos, and you'll adjust your offensive scheme. If you go on to uh, Twitter. And you look up uh, Boston College. There, I think it was yesterday. If you just look up the search term Boston College and go past all the Clemson, BC basketball stuff, there was someone yesterday putting up clips of Bill O'Brien's offensive schemes. They can be very complex, but he knows his stuff. This is a guy that teaches coaches clinics. He he is very, very well respected in what he can do for an offense. So I don't have any doubt he's going to figure out how to use Thomas Castellanos well. And I have no doubt that he's going to make Thomas Castellanos a better quarterback, too. On tomorrow's show, we'll get into UVA again. We're going to talk about this game, what happens on. It's a 930 start. Folks, we're going to sleep in May. Uh, John Rossine says it. I, I agree with him. I'm recording this very early in the morning. We are not live. I, uh, I got up early to get this going because I didn't want to stay up super, super late last night. But, man, BC basketball, let's do it. 
All right. Thank you all for listening. This is AJ Black. Follow me all on Twitter at AJ Black 247 and check us out on Eagle Insider. Thank you all the everydayers out there that listen. Um, if you're out there and you listen to us, you guys are the lifeblood of this pro- of this show. Thank you all so much. We'll be back again for another t- episode tomorrow of Locked On Boston College, your team every day.